the fundamental difference between transcendental and algebraic numbers is that a transcendental number is not the root of any non-zero polynomial with rational or integer coefficients. In other words, transcendental numbers cannot be expressed as the solution to an algebraic equation like this, where each coefficient a here is a rational number and n is a positive integer. What is weird about them is the fact that almost all real and complex numbers are transcendental, but identifying specific transcendental numbers is really hard. There is a sharp contrast between the rarity of algebraic numbers and the huge number of transcendental ones, even though they are so hard to find. Some examples of transcendental numbers are the following. Euler's number, e. The number pi. Liouville's constant. 2 to the power of pi, which is known to be transcendental by the Gelfand-Schneider theorem e to the power of pi, which is called Gelfand's constant. A weird fact is that if you add two transcendental numbers together, or multiply them, it doesn't guarantee that you end up with another transcendental number. For example, pi plus e and pi times e are suspected to be transcendental, but nobody could prove it so far. If you guys are enjoying this video, do not forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. Also, check out the PDF link in the description below and also our website where we post a lot of content related to the channel and other extra things. In order to understand transcendental numbers, let's take a step back and talk about the definition of algebraic numbers. Imagine the following polynomial. Fortunately, this polynomial can be decomposed in such a way that its roots become obvious. The roots of this polynomial are x equal to 1, minus 2, 3, and plus or minus the square root of 3. Therefore, by definition, these are algebraic numbers, so they cannot be transcendental. We said fortunately this polynomial can be decomposed, because usually quintic equations, so polynomial equations of degree 5, are really hard to solve. This difficulty is expressed through the abel ruffini theorem which states that there is no general formula using only radicals, like the quadratic, cubic, or quartic formulas, for solving quintic equations and higher degree polynomials. As we said, these numbers are called algebraic numbers, since they are roots of a polynomial with rational coefficients, namely this polynomial. So, the general definition of an algebraic number, alpha, is a real or complex number that is a root of some non-zero polynomial, with rational coefficients. So, p of alpha is zero. A transcendental number is a number that is not algebraic. So, if beta is a transcendental number, then no matter how creative you are, you will never be able to find a non-zero polynomial with rational coefficients, such that p of beta equals zero. So p of beta is always different from zero. By the way, we're looking for your research. We'd like to encourage you guys to submit your papers or your research to us so that we can publish it on our site where others can read and peer review it. It's a free and public way of getting your research out there. So please submit it to us. More details in the description. To understand why algebraic numbers are rare, we compare their size to the set of all real numbers. First of all, the set of algebraic numbers is countable. What does it mean? It means that you can count them, at least theoretically, even though you would never be able to stop, because they are not finite. Rigorously, we say that there is a mapping f that goes from the natural numbers to the algebraic numbers, such that this mapping is one-to-one. -one. So, it does not associate two natural numbers to the same algebraic number. And it is also onto. So, it spans all the set of algebraic numbers. In other words, no algebraic number is left out of this mapping. In practical terms, it is like assigning an index as a natural number to each algebraic number in the set. It looks like we are counting them, and that's why we say that the set of algebraic numbers is countable. Now, this is not intuitive, because we could imagine tweaking the polynomial graph to produce different roots in a continuous way. If you find a polynomial such that its graph passes through a transcendental point, then it means your polynomial does not have rational coefficients anymore. However, 
With algebraic numbers, you can do this continuous transformation such that the polynomial that you get at the end still possesses only rational coefficients. And this is so because even though the algebraic numbers are countable, they are also dense in R. Intuitively, no matter what real number you choose, you can always find algebraic numbers extremely close to where you are. Sets can be dense and countable at the same time. If you guys want a video dedicated to explaining the difference between being dense and uncountable, and for us to show you guys that these two counterintuitive ideas can coexist together, let us know in the comment section. The real numbers, on the other hand, are not only dense, but uncountable. Being uncountable is a stronger condition than being just dense. This means that you cannot imagine a function g that goes from the natural numbers to the real numbers that is one to one and on to. As we've seen before, the transcendental numbers are just real or complex numbers that are not algebraic. Another way of expressing it is by saying that the real numbers is the union between the set of algebraic numbers and the set of transcendental numbers. And therefore, if the algebraic numbers are countable, and if we also consider the transcendental numbers to be countable, then the real numbers, which are just their union, must be countable as well. This is a contradiction, and thus we conclude that our hypothesis was wrong. Indeed, the transcendental numbers are uncountable. But are they also dense? Yes, even though uncountability does not imply density. When comparing a set that is dense and countable, so the algebraic numbers, with a set that is dense and uncountable, so the transcendental numbers, we can easily see, intuitively, that the latter will always be larger. In fact, that's the intuition behind the statement transcendental numbers are more common than the rare algebraic numbers. The best way to see the rarity of algebraic numbers, as well as the difficulty in finding concrete examples of transcendental numbers, even though they compose the vast majority of real numbers, can be best appreciated through the lens of group theory and Galois theory. As we saw before, an algebraic number is a solution, or root, of a non-zero polynomial with integer or rational coefficients. These numbers are associated with Galois groups, which capture the symmetries of the roots of polynomials. If you want to know more about Galois groups, check out this video. But basically, algebraic numbers have a finite and well-defined structure based on its group structure. Transcendental numbers do not have any Galois groups associated with them. They lack structure and symmetry. We can say that it is way easier to find real numbers with no structure, almost random, rather than numbers with very clear symmetry and group structure, like the algebraic numbers have. As a consequence, algebraic numbers are rare because of the strong requirement of having structure, but easy to find once you have a polynomial. On the other hand, transcendental numbers are really common, almost random, since they have no Galois structure, but they are hard to pin down since there is no polynomial from where we can start the search. Don't forget to check out the PDF in the description below and to submit your research to us. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.